First of all, thank you guys and ladies for being here. Um, excited about where we are this spring. But you know, as I look back, 2021 was a great growing experience for our, for our staff, for our team. Defense, we had an opportunity to, uh, and I say opportunity today after you do it, to, to change the defense and then uh, to insert some transfers into our program. And then, uh, you know, all that culminated with, with the Vol victory uh, there in Houston. So I had an opportunity for my mom to be able to see me coach. And uh, of course, she has still many suggestions as to how I could do a better job. Um, and then, and then we went into the off season, and uh, that spent that was a, a great experience we think for our players. Had the opportunity to watch Coach True and his staff after a full cycle for them uh, change bodies on our team. No, no, no coaches' bodies changed, but uh, many of our players. Uh, they came back uh, into the spring looking differently. And it was because of the work that Coach True and his staff did. I think when you have success, it's always good to go back into and, and look at the things that you, you thought went well. And, and one of the things that we made a decision about in our, amongst our staff and in our, within our team is that we wanted to put some values, which you see around this building, uh, into our program and our core values of discipline, commitment, toughness, selflessness, those things uh, with Coach Kleiman's leadership, they really took over and, I, and our players and our leadership on our team uh, took over in that way. And so after having a what we would consider a successful season, um, you know, we just felt it, it really important to go back and and dig those core values up and make sure that through this off season that our players understood that that's uh, th those things are important and that's what we were about. And so as we go into the spring, you know, it, it's been, of course, we've only had three practices. This time last year, I, I believe I came in here and said, oh, this is the, these are the greatest practices we've ever had. Well, I won't, I won't say that, but I, what I will say is that we're on the right track. We have a long way to go. I told the cornerbacks the other day, uh, we're walking to Houston, and we hadn't even gotten to Oklahoma yet. All right, so so there's a long way to go. We have very limited opportunities in the spring, but we are we believe we are on the right track as a team, as a staff. We feel like we are on the right track, and so we're excited about where we're going. And with that, I'll open that thing up to questions. What makes Thad Ward a good fit for this coaching staff now that he's been around a little bit longer? Well, as we, as Coach Kleiman uh, went to find a coach, the next wide receiver coach, it was going to be important that we had a guy that had credibility with our players, uh, credibility with recruits. And Thad has coached some tremendous players who have had careers in the NFL and you know that's what recruits look at and that's what our players look at and so that was going to be important in the process but then to to be able to uh, hire a coach who was important who was big on relationships with his players again that was something that would be important to our staff that would be something that would we felt like in the recruiting process would, would be important and then uh, a guy who would bring and I don't coach offense but a guy who would bring ideas to our to our offensive staff. And so Thad, he checked all of those boxes and others, but those were very important um, factors in, in bringing him here. And since he's been here, uh, he's, he's been exactly that and, and again and more. You have a new transfer in your room with Josh Hayes. How does he kind of fit? And just three practices, so just what do you feel about, about how he's performed so far? Well, the fact is that Josh is a an older player, right? He he's a guy who's who's been around, and he has relationships with Coach Kleiman. He has relationships with Coach Klanderman, so there's some familiarity with him in in those ways. But but you know, when you bring a guy with maturity, when you bring a guy who handles his business, which that's the kind of person he is, uh, it's refreshing as a coach to bring that guy. He, he he comes in with leadership. No, he doesn't know all the names. But he's played a lot of football, and and our players give him, uh, our younger players especially, give him a certain amount of credibility as he walks into the room. And so as you want to continue to develop the room, as you want to continue to develop uh, the players uh, in the room, uh, bringing a Josh in 
he, he does that for us, not only in the cornerback room, but from, from a defensive standpoint, he's, he's brought that. You touched on some of this in your open, but a year ago, you're coming out of an unprecedented COVID year. You're putting in a new defense. You had some really into the transfer portal full, full bore for the first time. How much more settled or familiar does this spring feel to you? Well, from, from a defensive standpoint, you know, we, we've been together, it seems like, 10 years. And, um, you know, that, that's a, a level of comfort for our staff. But then when you talk about, you know, you talk about the transfer portal and, and us diving into it very deeply last season, well, we, we really got lucky because we, we got some guys that I talked about, Josh, earlier. We got some guys who came in with tremendous leadership, we got some guys who came in with great personalities. They were great team players. So they fit exactly what we needed at the moment. And it's, it's cool because the guys that we, that we recruited from the transfer portal this season, they had, to, they had to measure up to the standards that the Tim Horns and the uh, Julius Brents of last season, they had to measure up to those standards. And, and the guys that we brought in this year, they did. And so that's exciting. Uh, but but – uh, compared to last year, we, we, we had an idea of what the portal recruiting would be like. We have now an idea of or, or a great direction for where we want to be defensively. And so it's a lot more settling. Uh, it's a lot more settling feeling. Not, not, not entirely settling because uh, I continue to get gray hairs. And uh, um, that's just what happens, I guess, when you get to be 66. Some of you guys would know that. Um, as a defensive coach, you've got some depth issues right now because of injuries at positions. How difficult is it to get through practices and do the things you want to do? Well, there, there is some challenge with that. But, but, you know, you have to look at it when you have injuries. You, you have to look at it, of course. There's a guy who, who can't be out there. And, and, man, there's a lot of those guys, too many to even name. But, but there's another guy who is getting the opportunity to be out there. Titus Tui Asasopo is getting many opportunities to be out there. And as a young player, you know, that's what you look for in the spring. You want to do everything you can to develop the younger players. You, you like to put your starters out there because they look really cute as they run the defense, right? And it, it looks good because they understand the schemes, they understand the checks. But uh, really, what you want to do is have an opportunity to develop your team. And coaches, we, we always consider that a challenge, and it is, but, but there's light at the end of the rainbow. It, 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 ultimately, it is developing your younger players, you know. And so as we get all 56 of these guys who are on the injury report, as we get those guys healed up, it's, get, it's giving many of our, especially on the defensive line, it's giving many of our younger players an opportunity to get reps, many more reps than they would have ever anticipated. But it's helping our team, you know, at the end of the day. And this is probably the most important question of my career. Um, you and Coach Ward and Anderson have had some very visible cook-offs uh, going on here. Jerome Tang, the new basketball coach, claims to be a chef. Can a basketball coach keep up with your guys' cooking? I refuse to answer on the grounds that it may incriminate me. <laughs> With the uh, shift in defensive formation, what would you say was the tipping point for the 2021 defense where it began to make progress? Well, I think, you know, when you play defense, you, you want to be aggressive. You, you want to play fast. And when you, when you change systems, when you change schemes, there is a, a – well, at least for us, there's a considerable amount of hesitance, right? Wait, is – wait, am I doing this the right way? And there, there came a point – and actually we saw flashes throughout the season, but there came a point where our guys really settled in. Number one, we as a staff, we, we pared down things, you know. Sometimes as a coach you want to do a lot, you know, because it's, it's cool to do a lot, but for our players – it's, it's more cool to not do a lot, right, because you, you put them in a situation where they know exactly what they're doing, they understand, and they can play fast. And so um, I won't say that I, I don't even have a moment in the, in the season, but 
uh, toward the end of the season, you know, you could see our guys have a different level of comfort in the game. You, you saw them have a different level of comfort as they made checks. And then when we got into the, to the bowl game, with so much uncertainty as to who we would be playing and would it be a quarterback, would, it, would this quarterback, that quarterback, who, which receivers would play. Our guys were at a moment where, where it didn't matter to them because they understood what their jobs were. And so when you get to that place from a defensive standpoint, then, then, I, then I think you have command of, of, of the game. And beyond Boydell and Prince, what do you, how do you see the, the cornerback room kind of shaking out right now? Well, we, we've had a few guys, uh, younger guys, who, who didn't get as many opportunities as Boydo and Brents did, uh, from Omar Daniels, who was injured mo most of the season, to um, Darrell Jones, who was a young player who, you know, spent a lot of time on the scout teams. And so it's been good to see those guys, as well as um, Jarius Kennedy, and Jalen Carter, those guys get opportunities. Vaughn Malone is a guy I know his mom um, get an opportunity to um, you know <laughs> to get out there and get reps in the in the spring. Which again, I say the spring is the opportunity for guys. It, it's hope for guys who who they see Boydo, they see Brents, and they think, oh, I'll never get a shot. But you give them the opportunities in the spring so that. So that they know, well, I'm just not ready yet, or, or you know what? I think I've I've grown quite a bit, and, and I should get a shot, coach. Uh, and so it's exciting for me to be able to watch not just that position, which is my position, but guys along the along the defense to be able to get those opportunities. Who are you most looking forward to seeing if they can fill in for guys like Russ and Jerron and everybody else you lost at safety last season? Well, uh, at safety, it's, it's uh, you know, again, because a lot of guys are getting opportunities, but Sean Robinson, Sean Robinson has, has shown quite a bit in the offseason as well as, you know, early in the spring. Kobe Savage has, has shown some, some flashes. Uh, T.J. Smith, who is a young player, but, you know, we, we almost regard him as an older player. He, he's a younger player, and so uh, he's, he's done a pretty good job as, as we've moved Forward, those are the guys who, I mean, you know, who have stood out so far for me. Um, not even in the secondary, but Brandon Jennings, who is a, a transfer, and I, I've seen some flashes with him. He's he has tremendous size. He runs, but he's young. You know, he he's a young player, and and that's what I see is a lot of young guys out there moving around. Um, and again, like like in the T.J. Smith case, uh, you you. You've seen him play, and you you regard him as an older player, but he's very young in his career. So I, I continually uh, say that, that this guy is going to be a good player for us over time. I also wanted to ask, how much different is it to have uh, Colin as offensive coordinator? Does he have more of a voice in the coaching room now? And what have, what have you seen from the offense just in the brief time he's been in charge of it? Well, you know, they've done some different things. Well, of course, they, they're always a challenge. Uh, for us, just w with with as much movement as they do, as much motion and shifting as they do, so I don't think that is left. But I think Colin, um, I, I'm I'm excited for him to get the opportunity because I think um, what what I've seen is is more of the offensive guys. I I can see the flavor of of different people. I can see Thad's flavor, you know, in our offense, but I also see uh, things from a quarterback's. Uh, standpoint from a quarterback's vision uh, I see things that we're doing a little bit different in terms of the, the speed that we move offensively uh, and I you know we're, we're still offensively in the in the growing stages and Colin is going to be a great offensive coordinator uh, but I see you know s some some exciting things for our offense um, and um, you know again I, I see some input from the other coaches on the staff. So I think as a group, they, they'll they'll do a good job of giving Colin input, and he'll do a good job of um, continuing to make my hair gray this spring. You, you briefly mentioned it, and it was talked about a couple weeks ago, about the offense is moving faster. Specifically, what does that mean? Are you snapping the ball a lot faster? Yeah, well, you know, we, we face it quite often in the Big 12 where, where um, you know, offenses, they – 
They don't sub as much. You know, in, in the past, we, we, you know, had a lot. Again, I don't coach offense, but we have a lot of offensive packages. Well, when you have a lot of offensive packages, that helps me. That helps the defense, right? In a way, it, it, in a way it prohibits the defense because I can't call my defense until I understand what package you are going to present to me. But when you present the same look, when you present the same personnel, then there's a challenge for me because I don't I, I can't you can you can align quickly, right? And so I can't sub. If I needed to sub, I can't sub. So uh that that's one of the things that I see. Uh and I think, you know, for our for our players, uh it gives our offensive players an opportunity to to um stay on the field and play. You know what I mean? If I was a wide receiver, I I'd want to stay on the field and get an opportunity to catch more balls. Well, if if I'm not on the field, then you know I don't get those opportunities. So, um it's it's that, right? There's a different level of intensity when when you operate in that way from the offensive standpoint, and it creates a little bit of anxiety from the defensive standpoint. And so, uh when when you have offenses that that align quickly, that change plays on the line of scrimmage, well, I mean, again, that, that creates a certain level of anxiety for us defensive coaches. And I'm not telling you anymore about that. How's Jax doing at running back? He's a, you know, Jax is a, is a, is a physical runner, right? He, he's not the smallest guy in the world, so he's, he's hard to bring down. Uh, he's, he's, he's an intimidating presence as he's, as he's coming towards you. Uh, so, so that, you know, nothing changes in that way with Jax, but he, he's done a good job of catching the ball out of the backfield. He's always been a really good blocker. Uh, and so I'm, you know, I, I think he will continue to flourish in, in the offense and the things that they'll ask him to do. So you said you weren't going to talk more about about the offense, but no, I don't, I, I, there's no reason <laughs> well, for me to I'm, tell you that these guys are coming no. out in five wides and they're running no. the wishbone the very next play. No reason for me to bring that up. <laughs> no, I'm curious because <laughs> you've had more deliberate pace on offense before, but part of that was presumably to help keep the defense off the field too. So is there maybe going to be more of a challenge playing more? Defensive snaps with this offense. Yeah, and and, and that that's always that's always an issue. And I would not again. I I, I wouldn't say. I just said I wasn't going to talk about this, but but I, I wouldn't say that that we're we're moving at the pace that you know a lot of the teams. There are some teams that we they move at lightning speed. We're not doing that, but we're we're like I said, it's it's just more challenging, right? Of course. When it's your offense that is moving faster, if they move at a pace um, that uh, you know of some of the teams that we face, then it gets it gets to be you know more difficult. You, you're playing more snaps. Uh, I, I would not I would not characterize um, our offense as that, but the pace is accelerated. The pace is more intense, and you know you you. Um, again, that, that puts a challenge. That, that makes it more difficult for the defense to get yourselves aligned, right? If you, if you go to the line very quickly, I have to align very quickly. Doesn't mean you have to snap the ball, right? And so uh, there, there's a certain amount of anxiety that is created just by you getting yourself, uh, as an offense, getting aligned quickly. That's it. I'd like to ask about Julius and Echo and how you, I guess, motivate them to be even better than they were a year ago, and they were darn consistent. Uh, how, how do you how do you go about that? You know, one of the things, and, and we talk about this in the spring. We've only had three practices, but but I, one of the things that we said, or, or that I said when I came into the room in, in fall camp, is that what we want to do as players and what you want to do as an individual is that at the end of the season you want to be playing your best football right I, and I would not I don't know if as a cornerback group and I don't know if, if as a coach in the past uh, two seasons we did that right and so we, we talked about the fact that at the end of the season we want to be playing our best football and I'm not great at drawing but I drew a little graph that was going upward, right? We want all at the end of the year. You want to be trending upward. People say they remember November, right? Uh, and so at the end of the year, you want to play your best football. Well, 
we just carry that over to the spring, right? We get 15 opportunities. And if we take advantage of every single opportunity and think of it in that way and then uh, practice one and practice two, we even broke it down even more and said, okay, we get 24 opportunities to get better in every opportunity. So you have an uh, a responsibility to go into the special teams period and get better throughout that period. And when I think when you look at it in that way, and, and that's what we've done as a cornerback family, as a cornerback group with me as a coach, is we've, we've worked and talked about continually getting better that, again, we're, we're, we're going to Houston and we're still in Kansas, right? And so uh, working to get better every single play. And those guys have, have grabbed onto that. Uh, and Julius and, and Echo being leaders on our team, I would hope that that would, that that would filter to other positions as well, that we have that mindset. In addition, you, you mentioned Darrell and Omar, and I'm, I'm, I'm curious as to you know, where they're at uh, right now. I know both are young. Both you mentioned a scout team and injury. And, and motivating them to really push those other guys. Well, we're going to Houston, and those guys are still in Manhattan right now, yeah. right? Um, so they, they definitely have a long way to go. But um, they, they both work hard. They both, through the time with, with Coach True in the offseason, they've, they've been guys that he's highlighted as to be guys that, that we need to continue to have an eye on because they're, they did great things in the offseason. So I'm excited about – about where they are. Um, when you have a young guy at, at this position, you, you want to know if he – Julius Brents is clear. You know, he's, he's bigger than most offensive tackles, right? So, so those guys are not as big. And so we want to continue to develop them physically uh, so that they can aspire to one day be, you know, a, a guy that is strong and as powerful in the upper body as Julius Brents so that you can – Get your hands on and dominate receivers down the field. They're not in that place yet, but but I'm excited for their attitudes and for their direction in that in that way. And I just had a couple questions about Echo. Uh, can you speak to his leadership capabilities and what you've seen from him? Who is that, Echo? Yeah. You know, Echo. When, when, <laughs> I don't know if he he feel comfortable. I, well, I don't care if he be feel, feel comfortable. I'm gonna share it anyway. Um, Echo, when we first got here, he sent me a text message about a um, he had he had run a good 40 time or he did something and he had a, he had a video text message. Well, just before that message he sent me, I'd also gotten a uh, a report of him missing something, right? And so I sent back to him, hey man. I don't care about your speed. I care about you doing the things you're supposed to do, being where you're supposed to be. So, so I just dashed that. You know, as a coach, when you send your coach, hey, coach, check me out, and you dash water on that. In a way, I felt bad, but today I, I feel really good about that because from that moment, Echo knew that it was more, it was about more than what you do on the field. It's, it's about the complete package, and, and that's what he's been. Right S since that moment, he's he's been a guy who's taking care of his business, who has of course performed on the field. Uh, when we got here, he had a tremendous he had tremendous issues trying to gain weight, but he's he's worked on that and he's gained weight. Right, he's he's where we want him to be in terms of uh, his weight, and so when when you do that you have credibility to be a leader. He does not say much. He's not one of the rah-rah guys, but the people on our team, they respect him. When he says things, they listen. He's an intense competitor, and uh, I, I, I feel that – and he's on our leadership council. I feel like he is in a great place as a leader on our team. And as far as his on-field knowledge and just being a tactician and his um, technique – um, can you break that down a little bit and let us know how he's been able to grow in those areas? Well, he, he, he's, he's always been a, 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 a coachable guy, right? He's always been a guy who has, has taken coaching. He's always been a guy, when you look at the reports to see who's watching film, he's, he's, 
even when he didn't play as much, he was he was on the list for guys watching film. He's on the list for guys trying to get better. And so I've never had an issue with him in that way. He works hard at practice. Uh, and then he also takes guys. Uh, we, talk, we talk in our room quite a bit about doing extra. And so I always will see him grabbing guys to do extra, you know, along with him. So, uh, again, I, I couldn't say more positive things about, you know, who he is and from that text message uh, where he where he's grown from. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Yeah, with uh, Khalid Duke realizing he's uh, limited this spring, but just how exciting is it to have him back in the fold for 2022? Well, he, he's a tremendous he's a tremendous player. Uh, of course, when Khalid came, he was a linebacker. And, uh, and, you know, we moved him to defensive end. And, uh, you know, he, he reminds me of another player, Vaughn Miller, that we, that we coached who, was, who came into the program as a linebacker, moved him to defensive end, and he was a lights-out player. And that is what we've kind of seen uh, from Khalid Duke. And, you know, it's important for him to get healthy. But one thing I always uh, am, am pleased with with Khalid is that, even though he's injured, and and honestly, this happens with with many of the guys who are who are out and not playing. They are they're right on. I mean, they're almost in the way because they are right in there. They're watching every play. They're coming. They're talking. They're grabbing guys to be able to help them. Younger guys and new guys to be able to help them see. And so that's one of the things. And Khalid, just like I talked about, Echo, he doesn't say much, right? But on the football field. He he's a hardworking guy. He's a he is a communicator on the field. He's always grabbing guys to try to help them see. Uh, and so that's something that has been that I've been pleased with uh, with Khalid Khalid. And uh, and I, I honestly think that when when that guy does get back on the field, uh, we're gonna see some special things brewing. <laughs> 